வந்தேகம் is a lecture given by his divine grace AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada recorded on the 10th of December 1976 in Hyderabad India Disciple Avai Chanan Das was to become His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedan Prasami Prabhupada, founder of Acharya, of International Society, Krishna Consciousness. So, whatever I have appreciated, forty years ago, the same principle is going on, uh, there is no change. What I understood by spiritual master, practically I um, met him in 1922, and this poetry was written in 1936. That means uh, 14 years before writing this poetry. Uh, I met my Guru Maharaj in 1922. At that time, I was I was quite a young man, 25 years old only, and I was posted in a very responsible position as the office manager of Dr. Bose's laboratory, and I was. Found out in those days of Gandhi's movement. In 1922, I joined Gandhi's movement, and I gave up my educational career uh, because one of the Gandhi's program was to boycott uh, the universities. That's a very A long story, and many students gave up their educational career and joined this Gandhi's movement, and I was one of them. So, Dr. Bose, Kartik Chandra Bose, is a very important man at the time. He was managing director of Bengal Chemical Company. Now there is a street in the center of Calcutta, Dr. Kartik Bose Street. So he was very important man, and he was a family physician, and my father is very intimate friend. So when I gave up my education and I was joining Gandhi's movement at that time. Uh, Dr. Kartik Chandra Bose asked me to join him. So, with the permission of my father, I joined. Um, so, I was fond of at that time this Gandhi non-cooperation movement, and then when I joined Dr. Bose's laboratory. Uh, of course, I was dressed in khadda. Mm. The doctor was like that dress, khadda dress. He told me one day that out of your whole Gandhi's movement, I like this khadda only. <laughs> doctor was saying, and why? Now because this will give impetus to industry. This hand spinning will gradually give impetus to India. Actually, that happened. He was himself an industrialist. Actually, in India, the chemical industry was given birth 
बाई डॉक्टर का शिक्षण लोग इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मैन ही स्टार्टेड दिस बंगाल केमिकल सो नाइनटीन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी टू आई मेट माई गुरु महाराज थ्रू दी एक्सीजेंसी ऑफ माई इंटीमेट फ्रेंड मिस्टर नरेंद्र नाथ मल्लिक I would not go. Uh, he told me information. There is a nice sadhu. Uh, let us go and see. I did not like very much these sadhus in those days, national spirit. So I said I have seen many sadhus. They come at my father's care. I was not very much pleased with the view. So he dragged me, forcing me. No, I have heard this person is very exalted. So I went, and his first opening, Malson was that you are educated young man. Why don't you preach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's gospel in the Western country? I did not know. Uh, So this was his blessing in the first meeting. I did not know, but I because we belong to a Vishnu family, we were very much uh, worshipper of Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda, our family deity. So I was very much pleased that here is a personality. Who is going to preach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, gospel? I was very much pleased. So anyway, hmm. from 1922 to 1933, uh, practically I was not initiated, but I got the impression of preaching Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's cult. That I was thinking, and that was the initiation by my Guru Maharaj. Then officially I was initiated in 1933 because uh, in 1923 I left Calcutta. I started my business at Alawa. So. I was always thinking of uh, my Guru Maharaj. That I met a very nice sadhu. Uh, although I was doing business, I never forgot him. Then in 1928, these Gauri Math people came to Alawa. This during Kumbh Mela, as the Kumbh Mela is going to be held this year, a similar big Kumbh Mela was held in 1928. In those days, they came to open their branch in Alawa, and somebody recommended that you go to. At that time, I was running on my big pharmacy, and I was very well known man in Alawa as the proprietor of the pharmacy. So somebody recommended them that you go to our Alawa. He is a very religious man. He will help you. So when they entered my shop, I was very much pleased that this man I met in 1922, and now they have come in this way, become reconnected. And 1933, I was officially initiated, and my only qualification was when. Uh, I was introduced to my Guru Maharaj for initiation. The Guru Maharaj immediately said, "Yes, I shall initiate this man. He is very nice. He hears me very patiently. He does not go away." So that was my qualification. They. I stand there of philosophy, which you are speaking at that time. 
Actually, I could not follow what was you are speaking, but still I like to hear. Uh, that was my hobby. Uh, whenever I was asking, so when Guru Maharaj will speak, so he took it very seriously. Uh, and then in 1936, it's a long history. Uh, during the, this Vaspuja day, uh, this Vaspuja day, whatever I studied about our relationship with my Guru Maharaj, I expressed in this poetry, and since that day uh, my god brothers used to call me poet, and Guru Maharaj also very much appreciated this poetry. Uh, now, some or other you have found it. I thought the poetry is lost, but I do not know how it was found out by some of our disciples. I think it was found out in London uh, Museum or somewhere else by Gurga. Uh, they had a stock of harmonists, and from the harmonist by Guru Maharaj's paper, this poetry was found. Uh, otherwise, I thought it was lost. But anyway, this poetry uh, adore, adore ye all the happy day, blessed than heaven, sweeter than may. Uh, so I heard that the month of May is very pleasing in the Western countries. So I compared the happiness of this day with the May day. They call it May day. Mm. Yes. Mm. When he appeared at Puri, the holy place, my Lord and Master is divine bliss. So, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur appeared as the son of Bhaktivinoda He is fourth son. Bhaktivinoda Thakur and his family man, his seven children, sons and daughters, so, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, known in his previous life as um, Bhagala Prasad Dutta, son of um, Kiranath Dutta, his father, Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, his name was, he was manager, and he was manager also, the managing board of Jagannath Puri. The system is the local magistrate becomes the official manager of the managing board of Jagannath Puri. So uh, at that time you are situated in Jagannath Puri and Bhaktivedanta Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur appeared in at Puri. And the Rasa-yatra, the Rasa-yatra ceremony takes place and sometimes the big rasa stops at intervals. So the house in which Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur appeared, in front of that house the rasa stopped. So his mother took the advantage and because Bhaktivinoda Thakur was majesty, so the son, the little baby, was brought before the Rafa, and the Pujaris allowed him to bring the child before the deity. And the, deity, the child was placed before the deity, and a garland was offered by Jagannā. So that was the first sign of his becoming the Acharya. 
In this way there are many incidences. So therefore his birthplace is mentioned, the holy place, my Lord and Master is the mind. O oh, my Master, the evangelic angel, give us thy light, light up thy candle, struggle for existence, a human race, the only hope is divine grace. So, actually, uh, we are in a very precarious condition, the modern civilization, I mean to say, manipulated by the Western people, uh, there is soul-killing civilization, this civilization. By nature, the chance is given after many, many evolutionary processes. There are all the Khani, Savara, the Kavinsati. The evolution theory is there in the Padma Quran. It is not Darwin's theory. Darwin stolen it from Padma Quran and he presented in a distorted way of his own images. Otherwise, the Darwin's theory is not the original. The theory, this is not theory, fact, jivajatish. Uh, there is wandering within the cycle of jivajati, different species of life. Tatadri hantarapta. This is basic knowledge. This evolutionary process. It is not Darwin theory. So that process, and lower animals, and then the chronological order is there. First of all, aquatics, jalaya. Jalaya means aquatic. Then savara, the tree plants. Uh, then flies, then birds, then bees, then human beings. In this way, bhausambhavante, uh, after many, many millions of years, we get this opportunity of human life to realize God. And this civilization is denied, refusing the opportunity to the human society to understand God. Such a soul-killing civilization. It is a fact. They deny uh, what is God. There is no God. Everything is science. Although they cannot explain science, they cannot do anything, simply talking like God. Last time some girls came, so they are students of botany. So I asked them, so can you manufacture a seed which can give birth to a big barium tree? No, sir, it is not possible. Then what kind of water you study? Actually, what is their science? They talk uh, simply something which is going on in the middle force. Where is the beginning? And where is the end of knowledge that they do not know? They are theorizing only in the middle. They do not know the Madhasya Jataha. Where is the beginning of this science? That is, beginning is Krishna. Krishna says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhupada. Yes. Vijuham Sarva Bhutana. That seed you scientists you cannot manufacture. What chemicals are there that if you put in the earth and pour some water and it will grow a big tree? These scientists they cannot explain what is the chemical composition is there. But there is. So that is in the hand of Krishna. So this knowledge means to understand the original source. That is philosophy. Find out the original source. That is knowledge. So the 
Vedu Sthya Sadva Yaham Eva Vedya. Actually, the knowledge terminates when you understand Krishna. He is the source of everything. So, there is a struggle for existence in a human way. The only hope is divine grace. So we got this information from his divine grace. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasadi Tagur. And that knowledge is still going on. You are receiving through his servant. And in future, the same knowledge will go to your students. This is called parampara system. parampara. It is not that you have become a student, you will remain a student. No. One day you shall become also guru uh, and make more students. More students. More, that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mission. Not that. Perpetually, yes, one should remain perpetually a student. Uh, but he has to act as guru. That is the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, it is not that. Because I am acting as guru, I am no longer student. No, I am still student. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us this instruction that we shall always remain a foolish student before our Guru Maharaj. That is the Vedic culture. I may be a very big man, but still I should remain a foolish student to my Guru. That is the quality. Guru Mare Mutpadeti Kadiva Sasa. We should be always prepared to be controlled by the Guru. That is very good qualification. Jasya Prasadad Bhagavat Prasad. Arana Kodiyamane Asa. So we should become always. And a very obedient student to our Guru. That is the qualification. That is the spiritual qualification. So recently I am very pleased to say that our Harikesh, I ordered him to go immediately to Poland. And he thought that he has been punished. That was no. I was thinking that here is a very intelligent boy. If he is given chance to preach, he will come out very successful. So I see the glimpses that he has got in our post. He is a very good organizer. That's a chance. At that time, he might have thought that I was separating him. No, my, my good will was there. That he should be given chance for better opportunity. So I am I'm very much happy that he is doing that very nice. But this should be the attitude. Uh, my Guru Maharaj wanted me to preach in those temples. Uh, although I was at that time a uh, ordinary manager in a chemical farm, I never thought but I took it seriously. So from that 1922 to 1965, it was fruitful. How many years? Forty-three years. So it is better late than never. <laughs> yes. So he desired me. I thought now I am a family man. Let me adjust things. I would have accepted immediately. But I was not so intelligent at that time. I thought my responsibility to family is there. Let me wait. But still, uh, Guru Maharaj uh, was so kind to me that when I was Dhyastra, I was seeing him dream. And, and I was, he asked me, come with me. So I was going, and after that I was thinking 
Oh, I will have to take sannyas and go with him. So it appeared to me very horrible. I was not very much uh, inclined to take sannyas. But Guru Maharaj is so kind <coughs> that he ultimately forced me to take sannyas and do this work. Uh, so it is all his kindness. Uh, so this is the memory of his kindness. So forty years ago, I remember the same thing as it is in 1922, and still the same thing is going on. There is nothing new. We have nothing to do new. Simply let us present as it is. It is the same. There is no... You see, the spirit of my writing is the same. Misled we are all going astray. This soul-killing civilization is misleading us. We must know it. This very misleading civilization. Our real aim of life is to understand our spiritual identification and uh, search out our relationship with God, Krishna. That is our real business. But this modern civilization is misleading us in different ways. So I wrote this. The misled we are all going astray. Save us, Lord, our permanent pray. Wonder thy ways to run to turn our face, adore thy feet, your divine way. So this portion is very much appreciated. So we have to find out ways how to turn the current. The current is sense in Material life means the current is sense in that. And this current has to be turned sense enjoyment of Vishnu. Sense enjoyment is there. But the material civilization, the misled civilization is that the sense gratification is taken personal. When this sense gratification will be turned towards Krishna, then our life is it. That the gopis, apparently it appears that gopis, they were attracted by young boy, Krishna, and for their sense gratification, they made fancy with Krishna. No, that is not the fact. The fact is that gopis used to dress themselves nicely because by seeing them, Krishna will be satisfied. Not that uh, for their sense gratification. Generally, a girl dresses herself to attract the attention of the boy. So the same thing is there, but it is Krishna's sense gratification, not the gopis. The gopis did not want anything. But Krishna is being satisfied. That is the difference between lust and love. Uh, love is there, only possible when it is diverted uh, towards Krishna. That is love. And below that, everything is lust. Uh, so you should always remember this. Uh, the senses are not stopped, but when the gratification of the senses is directed towards Krishna, that is bhakti and love. And when the sense gratification is directed towards personal self, that is lust. This is the difference between lust and love. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur knew this art how to turn our activities for the satisfaction of Krishna. Oh, this is Krishna consciousness movement. Mm. Therefore, I wonder the way to turn our face adore thy feet on divine ways. Forgotten Krishna, we fallen souls. Why we are fallen? Because we are fallen. Our relationship with Krishna is eternal. Unless it was eternal, how you Western peoples could be devotee of Krishna? Artificially, you cannot be a devotee of Krishna. Uh, 
the relationship is there, eternal. Nitya Siddha Krishna Bhakti. Uh, by the process, uh, it is now awake. Sapanadi Suddha Chitte Kare Uda. It is awake. Uh, love between young man and young man, it is not artificial. It is there. But by certain circumstantial uh, environment, the love becomes manifest. Similarly, our love for Krishna, relationship with Krishna is eternal. Jive Sarupa Nitya Krishna da. But we have to create such situation that eternal relation should be awake. That is the art. That is one. The forgotten Krishna will call in souls and be most heavy religion soul. Because we have forgotten Krishna. We are paying heavy, heavy toll, tax, uh, taxation. What is a taxation? The taxation is vivattanti mittu saṅsāra vatmani. This human life is meant for uh, understanding Krishna. But instead of understanding Krishna, we are understanding the so-called material science, persons get it. This is our position. The energy which was given by nature to understand Krishna, that is being utilized how to manufacture something for sense that we This is my This is my illusion. Therefore, it is the most heavy the illusion stone. Toll tax. That is a pain. Uh, because we have forgotten Krishna, therefore now we have manufactured the nuclear weapon, Russia, America. And you have to pay heavily. They are already paying heavily the uh, armament uh, preparation is going on. And then more than fifty percent of the income of the state and now being spent for this army heavily. And instead of other purposes, it is being spent for military strength, every state. Uh, that is a heavy toll we are paying. And when there is war, there is no limit hmm. how much we are spending for this devastation. Uh, so why? Because we are forgotten Krishna. This is a fact. Uh, so these people that are made the United Nations unnecessarily fighting like dogs. So, this is not solve the problem. Uh, problem will be solved. If the past is a delusion, then the whole world, not only this world, as uh, Krishna says, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. Krishna is the proprietor. So why not accept? Actually, He is the proprietor. Who has created this planet? We have created, or our father created? No. Krishna has created. Uh, but we are claiming this portion is American, this portion is Indian, this portion is Pakistani. Unnecessary. What is the value of this claim? We may claim it for fifty years, sixty years, hundred years, and after that one kick, get out. Where is your claim? But they do not understand this philosophy. They are fighting. That's all. This is my land. This is my land. They do not know, Krishna said, Tatāvīhāntarapsā. You are American today, tomorrow, even if you are America, if you become an American cow or American animal, nobody will care for you. Nobody will care for your politics. But this art they do not know. This science they do not know. They are under illusion. They are thinking that I shall continue to remain American, so let's waste my time for American interest, so-called interest. There cannot be any interest. Pati-takri-mārāṇi, gunai karmāṇi Everything is being done by nature. We are simply falsely thinking. Ahaṅkāra vimurātmā kattāma yati-mānā. This illusion is going on. Parvātmi Krishna, a fallen soul, pay most heavy the illusion to the place. Darkness around all untrest, the only hope you divine. This means simply you are in dark. 